Hey everyone, Eric here. In this video, I'm going to help you understand how to break down unit economics for startups. By the end of this video, you will understand how to calculate the unit economics for e-commerce, software, and hardware businesses, as well as a software and hardware business model combined. Okay, let's get started. So, the first thing that we're going to look at here is the definition of what are unit economics. So, unit economics are the financial breakdown of your relationship with one individual customer. It's basically like an income statement with one person. So, it's a record of, for the average one customer, how much is the average they spend and all of the expenses associated with delivering the product and also doing the marketing to bring that new customer into your business. So let's walk through this first with an example of an e-commerce business. So here we're saying that we are a company that sells sweatshirts. So with unit economics, you always have to start with the breakdown of one individual order. Okay, for this business, we're gonna say one individual order on average is $129 of revenue. So that's called the average order value. So we're saying $129. And the COGS, which is the cost of goods sold, those are the direct costs associated with the product, are a couple things, and we're keeping it simple for this example. We're saying the product costs $43 to manufacture, and then the shipping associated with the product is $18. So there are $61 of costs, which leaves us with $129 minus 61 is $68 of gross margin, or sometimes we call it gross profit. So that's a 53% gross profit margin. But we had to spend $71 in marketing, so let's say in paid advertising, to actually acquire this customer. So if you look at your marketing spend and you look at a period of time, let's say you spent thousands of dollars and you got hundreds of customers, the average uh, marketing cost to get one new customer to buy for the very first time is called your customer acquisition cost, or we call it the CAC. So this is your blended CAC. So we made $68 on the customer, but we actually had to spend $71 to get that customer to buy. So after marketing, our post-marketing profit is actually negative $3. We lost money. So at first glance, you would say, okay, so this is not a good business because it actually loses money after you do the marketing. However, most customers don't buy just one time. Most customers buy uh, multiple times and depends on the type of product and the type of business, but with e-commerce businesses, generally you'll see you know, customers buy at least maybe one and a half or two times. So let's say we look back at all of our historical data Let's say we look back at the data from the prior year, the prior couple years, and we looked at the total orders coming from those customers, and we saw that the average customer didn't just make one order, they actually made 1.6 orders uh, on average. So a bunch made two, a bunch made three, a bunch made one, and the average was 1.6. So in this scenario, basically, the, you had your $129 of revenue per order times 1.6, so that's $206 of revenue per customer. So that is really your lifetime revenue. Next, uh, what about the cost of goods sold? Well, all you need to do is multiply the lifetime orders times your cost per order. So in this scenario, you see that we just multiplied product and shipping by 1.6. Our total costs are 97.60, and the gross margin is still 53%, of course. Um, and we have $109 of lifetime gross profit. So your lifetime gross profit is a concept called your customer lifetime value, which is probably the most important metric for any startup and really any business. Because this is the profit that you expect to make on a customer. Even if they buy for the first time today, you can predict predictably forecast, if you have good historical data, that you will end up making about $109 on this customer and so why is that important? Well, the second time they buy, we likely didn't have to do any marketing. Maybe they're on our email list, and so they're just receiving our, our marketing emails. So the customer acquisition cost is still only $71. And so now that they've made their additional 0.6 orders, we actually have made $38 
on our customer over their lifetime. So if you look at it from this perspective, the unit economics are actually profitable um, for our customer. But if you were to just look at it on a one order basis, um, you would incorrectly think that the business is sort of has bad unit economics or, you know, is unprofitable and should do something else. But if you looked at it on a lifetime basis, then you would understand that things are profitable. Okay, so now let's move from an e-commerce to a B2B subscription, sorry, B2C subscription product. And by the way, if you're finding this content valuable, please subscribe to my channel right now. Only about 10% of people that watch my videos are subscribed. Like this video, leave me a comment. It would help me a lot. And I really appreciate your support. Okay, so now let's look at a, a software product. And in this case, we're going to say it's a subscription, a, a B2C, so um, a business to consumer subscription product. So you're selling direct to customers. You're not selling B2B, which is direct to businesses. So like that's enterprise software. This is just a consumer software, like something like Spotify or, or, or something else. Um, but in this scenario, we're saying that uh, one month of our, of our software costs $149. So um, maybe this is something like some heavy investment research, or maybe it's um, an email marketing product or something like this. Um, so it's $149 per month. And when we break down the cost of goods sold, the cost of goods sold for software, it's not like a, a physical product. Like that's where you have to manufacture the product and then ship it. Software, obviously there's no shipping, there's no manufacturing because it's already built. So the direct costs, the cost of goods sold for software are usually hosting. So you have to pay some, it's usually like Amazon Web Services or, or through Microsoft or one of these other kind of hosting companies. And you usually have um, client services. So these specific numbers um, don't make sense on an individual basis. But at scale, let's say you have you know, 1,000 active customers, you would just look at, OK, how much am I paying per month to the Amazon Web Services? Um, what's the cost of our customer support team? And you would divide that by the number of orders, and you could come up with averages. And these averages would help you get to a gross margin. And software products usually have gross margins around 80%. Uh, can be a little higher or lower, but that's sort of or the range that, that you usually see, kind of 80, sometimes 90%. So this makes sense um, directionally. But let's say to get this customer, we had to spend $352 in marketing. So that's our blended customer acquisition cost. Um, blended means it's all your channels combined. You can look at your marketing cost by channel. You can say, OK, on Facebook, it costs this. On this other channel, it costs this. On this other channel, it costs this. They're all going to have different efficiencies, but I'm saying um, blended means all the channels. So everything you spent divided by, by all your new customers. So that's your customers coming through paid channels and your customers coming through free channels, um, which we call organic customers. So I'm saying your blended CAC is 352. So on a one month basis, on the first month that our customer buys, we lose $226 because we only made $126 of profit of gross margin, and so we're actually in the red. But for software products, this is obviously completely, completely normal. And the real question here is how many months did they stick around as a subscriber? So um, let's say our monthly churn rate, so the percentage of customers that cancel on any given month is 13%. So how long can we expect uh, the average customer to stay on? So there's a really simple formula when you have a monthly churn. It's just one divided by the, the monthly churn rate. And so you get an average here of 7.7 .7 months. If you were to do all the math and calculate everything, it would break down to a 7.7 .7 month average. And so now all we need to do is multiply our average monthly revenue, our average order value, by the average customer lifetime. And then you have the customer lifetime revenue, which is $1,146. So hosting support the same. We just multiply it by the number of months. And in this case, you can see that 7.7 um, .7 months at uh, our gross margin of 84% is $966 of lifetime gross profit for a customer. And again, 
Lifetime gross profit is your customer lifetime value. This is a target for every business needs to be studying their customer lifetime value to see if their marketing uh, investments are making sense. So now that we see um, that our customer lifetime value is 966, well, obviously in month two, month three, month four, month five, there's no marketing cost. So the only marketing investment we made was to get them to buy for the very first month. So your CAC is still 352. And then in this scenario, if you look at your customer lifetime value and you subtract your CAC, well, we actually made $614 on our relationship with this one individual customer. So the unit economics for this software product are very um, favorable. And in software specifically, one really helpful metric is the lifetime value to CAC ratio. So what you do here is you just take your post, sorry, you just take your customer lifetime value and you divide it by your uh, customer acquisition cost. And we see it's 2.75. Um, usually sort of uh, good software products have a LTV to CAC ratio of three or better directionally. Sometimes in the early days, um, two can be okay, but as you scale up, you obviously want to make sure that you have a healthy margin of profit on your relationship with each customer. These customers are very sticky. So um, some of the best software products even have um, LTV to CAC ratios of five or 10 or even more. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention is that if you, um, monthly churn rates are okay, um, but the real best way to look at uh, customer retention or customer retention cohorts, I'll include a link to how to actually cohortize the, the retention of your customers. I have a whole, another video. It's kind of more how we look at it in terms of the VC startup world. Customer cohorts just show if you have customers purchasing in a starting month, how long do they stick around on average? They work for subscription products really well. Um, they can work for um, marketplaces, platforms, e-commerce businesses. It's a, a really nice way to sort of visualize how sticky your customers are. And the reason why they work well for, for software products sort of better than just the churn rate is because churn rates usually vary over time. So in the first couple of months, you might see a lot of churn, but then customers who've stuck around for, let's say, 15 months might have an extremely low churn. So uh, it's not good to just completely generalize the churn rate every single month. It's better to sort of look at churn uh, as it changes over the lifetime of the customer. But for simplicity, this is okay for, for this model right here. Okay, the third thing we're gonna look at is hardware. And so I'm just gonna compress these really quick and just kind of talk um, through this. So in this business, we are gonna look at a business that makes a hardware product, but combines it with a software product. So there's a lot of businesses that have done this and even pre-tech like uh, the printer ink model where they sell you a printer and then you buy the ink. Um, maybe they sell you a Roku and then they monetize um, your user activity in different ways. Um, I think Tesla, I heard that they were gonna be charging a subscription for their autopilot. Anyway, having people buy something and then having them pay a recurring cost for additional services over time is obviously very, very standard and it applies to like a lot of, a lot of different types of business models. So we are gonna say here that we're a business selling some type of software, uh, sorry, hardware. It costs $599. And um, for us to produce it, it actually costs $629. The product, the shipping's $89. The total is $718. So the gross margin is negative $119. So we lose money on the hardware. And this is very, very common in these types of businesses. They'll lose money on the hardware because they know they're gonna make a lot of money on the software. So in this situation, what we're saying is we lose $119, but this business is actually combined with the software business we just looked at. So this was only part of the business. The real business sells some you know, hardware product, maybe it's some virtual reality product, and then they sell some um, type of software that goes alongside it. So we're gonna say that they buy the hardware and then after, they, um, they pay for the software. So we're gonna use the exact numbers from above. And so the, so the hardware they only purchase one time. So the customer lifetime value is one order. But the software, 
they are purchasing, obviously for an average of 7.7 .7 months. So I'm just linking in the numbers from above so that we can sort of look at this. Okay, so you can see here that, and let's look at the CAC. So we're saying that the CAC is basically for both businesses. So the 352 actually applies to acquiring one customer who then buys both things. So we're saying that's the total CAC to bring one new customer into our ecosystem. So the only way to really make sense of these two things is to add them together to see if, um, as a business, does our combined software and hardware product make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the total lifetime revenue here. So it's $17.45. Then we're going to add up um, basically all of the cost of goods sold costs. And I recognize here that um, these are hosting and customer, customer support, and these are product and shipping, but they still all go in the COG section, so um, we'll be fine. And this here, you can see our total cost of goods sold is $897. And so our gross margin between the 84% product and the negative 20% is $49, $847. That is our customer lifetime value. So if you have a business that combines various products, this hardware could just be some um, implementation cost of the product. A lot of times there's an upfront fee if you're going to do an, an implementation of NetSuite or some really complicated enterprise software, but that's part of your unit economics of one customer. So in this situation, your blended CAC is still 352. And now you can see here that your post-marketing profit on this whole thing is $495 and your LTV to CAC ratio is 2.4. So your business makes, um, for the money that it puts in to do the marketing, it makes 2.4 times that amount of money in gross profit that then comes back to the business. So this is obviously a, a, a solid profitable business, and this is how you combine various products with different margins um, at the same time. Okay, I hope this gives you some perspective on how to break down unit economics for different types of startups. By the way, if you want me to teach you everything I know about finance for startups in a small group with personalized support for me, Join the waitlist in the description below for a chance to join the next cohort of my training program, Finance for Startups. As always, in the description below, you can also download this Excel file for free. And if you found this content valuable, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.